Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and welcome to my most low tech pirate gorilla style video that I have ever made. We are indeed using, in fact, actually, it's a Canon D camera, not even a webcam, and we're recording myself as I play an iPad at a very annoying angle. My body is 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 over here. I'm trying to motion to you guys on the side here. Um, so I'm literally like s s beside the iPad looking at an extreme angle trying to play it and record for you guys. There are some iPhone iOS games in this 1001 book and we're nothing if not beholden to this book for some reason. We've come so far, we really, we, we can't give up on it this, at this point. <clears throat> One of the games, <coughs> excuse me, that we've got is Geo Defense Swarm. So you can see the icon there. The one nice thing about playing any touchscreen video game is that when you go to control it, you can't see half the screen because your your hand and your arm is in the way. So today we're going to be playing this game. I hope you guys like it. Um, no, even if you're not recording, this is this is one thing. Okay, we'll jump into the game. I'm not just going to bellyache, but I will say as someone who grew up in like DOS games and Nintendo and all that, one thing I always really liked about those games is being able to see what I was doing on the screen while I played it. And I know a lot of people play touch games. A lot of people love them. I'm old and cantankerous. And my view on this is I don't want to be touching the area of whatever the system is that's trying to show me information. Because it's like the equivalent of, of playing a game like this. I, I don't want to do this. But anyway, uh, we're going to play this game here today. So Geo Defense Swarm. Um... Oh, good. You know what I like about video games? When you go to play one and the first thing you have to do is sign up for some, like, online account thing. So why don't... Can we skip this? What the hell? Where's the back button? Oh, look at this. Okay, you can't even see that. There's a full screen button there. Let's full screen this. There you go. Uh, are you serious? Oh, my God. I actually have to sign in. All right, look away. And we're back. Oh, my God, I got... What? Go away. What? Why? I... Oh, I... I don't give a shit. <laughs> Everyone can fucking see me. Who cares? Okay, here, let's try this again. Transition to a video game. Hey, do you guys want to play a video game or sign up for some account so that they can spam you with robocalls about social insurance stuff when they invariably sell your account info? Today we are playing Geoswarm Defense Contract Mission Prototype Number 1. Allow tracking on the next screen. Advertisements that match your... Are we still not in the fucking game? Are you serious? Help us market the game to new audiences. Unlock levels when sharing with your friends. It wants to track me. <laughs> what the hell? Don't track me. God damn it. Can I play a game? Is this a game or is this like a back way of like involving you in like a government surveillance program? Okay, here we go. Our high score is up here. Your lives left. Each time a creep gets here, you lose one. Oh, this is, so this is like a tower defense. Well, geoswarm defense. That would make sense. Down I don't know if you guys could hear that. I'll max out the volume as best I can. All right. So I think you just sort of like place gun turrets here. And then, I don't know, I guess a little Pac-Man are coming to kill me. I was going to say, did my turrets actually do anything? Okay. So it's just literally every tower defense game that was ever created in Flash that we played on E-Bombs World for the past, like... How, how popular were... Um, oh, God. I don't know if the volume is going to be too loud. I won't be able to remix it later, so maybe I'll turn this down. But, like, when were tower defense games super popular? I feel like it was early 2000s. That's when I sort of played a few. I mean, I guess it is the perfect game to play with, uh, you know, these controls because you can place all your turrets and then move your hand out of the way and then it just auto plays. Oh, one guy got by. We'll finish him real quick. See, I guess the trick is you want to be on the inside of the curves so you can't even see when I point. 
So it's like you want a, a gun here, but not here. So the inside of the curves, you have more time to like shoot at the bad guys because you have like more area to get them. So we'll go like right there. Probably be fine. Yeah, let's throw another one right there. Oh, one guy got by. Oh, that's actually like quite elaborate. I should remember to move my hand so you guys can see what's going on. Okay, so let's add another gun. Are there any other kinds of guns that we get, or is it just this one forever? I imagine there are more. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I don't. So I've thought I've uh, this has come up a number of times as we've gone through this thousand one challenge. Like, would we include or would I include this game? Um, and we've played a handful of tower defense games. One that stood out to me was actually on PC. <laughs> and I feel like that one was quite interesting. There were like lasers and stuff. I forget the name of it, but there were like multiple paths the enemy could take. And it was all in 3D. And like that one seemed pretty cool. I mean, this is like the literal, this is a flash game. Like it is sort of bare bones, just basically rotations and barely animated shapes. Um, so at least the PC game has sort of the 3D graphics going for it. I mean, this is obviously, you know, this is the kind of games that you saw on phones in the early days. Now phones definitely have like 3D graphics and stuff. I think phones these days are more powerful than the desktop computer I used to play like my DOS games on. Speaking of DOS games back in the day, like my precious 386, 486, eventually got a Pentium computer. I think the phone in my pocket is like 10 times more powerful than my Pentium ever was. It's just kind of amusing. Uh, good spot for missile tower. It fires slow, but hits hard into splash damage. Okay. Uh, missile towers level one. Oh, you can actually upgrade these things. This is the upgrade button. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this is all pretty standard affair stuff. I mean, I think this is a better spot. No? What are these? Oh, I don't even know what this is. All right. Well, throw in one right there. And we'll throw like one there. And we ran out of money. Oh, those are laser beams. Okay, well, that is clearly in the wrong spot. You want the laser beams somewhere where they can, uh, like, hit multiple things at once, I think. Hmm, interesting. Well, I mean, we're doing okay. Let's try, try and upgrade here. Uh, upgrade for 10. Well, there we go. The area of effect. You can't you guys can't even see it. It's even really hard to see on the camera. I have all the lights on in the room, just I'm in a basement, so it doesn't it, it looks on camera like I'm playing this in the dark, but I really am not. I really am not. It's like fully bright in here. <coughs> um I should be upgrading this stuff, by the way. Upgrade. And upgrade you too, man. Welcome to the party, pal. Yeah, I think the, the rockets are going to start doing work once we get all these guys overlapping. Or not. Boom. What I need is a freeze cannon to slow some of these guys down. That would be the trick that you want to engage in here. Come on, man. This, you know, this green gun is practically useless. It's hilariously ineffective. These missile towers are where it's at. Build more of those. Let's upgrade them too. <clears throat> so this is game. This is game for now. We play today. Um, I don't know what else there is to say about a tower defense game. Yeah, so, I mean, like, games have ended up in the Thousand and One book for all sorts of different reasons. Um, and definitely there have been games that have been in the book where I'm like, it's not the be it's not the most fun game to play these days, and I don't know if I'd necessarily go back to it, but it was so influential and so big and so important that obviously it has to be in the book, right? So it's like, there certainly are games like that. And I don't know the history of this one. Was it, like, the first tower defense game on the iPhone? I mean, it damn well better be. <laughs> if it's just a tower defense game that's in the iPhone then the, the the writers of this book have now officially lost all credibility in my mind. But uh, no, uh, 
Yeah, this better not just be somebody's fit. There has to be some kind of like, oh, it was like the the first million dollar app on the iPhone or something. And uh, I don't know, we're losing. But you know, what? I I I had a hundred and twenty four dollars. It's gone now. I could have placed more turrets. I literally just didn't care enough to do it. Have you guys ever played a game where you're like you're watching yourself lose, and I like and you're like I know I have to do something. I just don't even care. I feel like... You know what? The other thing is I don't want to play the game too much or they're going to start tracking me with like all my account info and stuff I just entered, so they're going to know what's going on. Um, I guess let's try it again. Why the hell not? All right, let's throw up a couple missile turrets. There we go. That was fun. Okay. Oh, that one ended up not in the spot where I wanted it. Oh, I'm out of money. All right, come on, Pac-Man. I guess having two missile turrets side by side isn't necessarily a good idea because they often go for the same target. A little overkill. But you know what? That's how I do. I kind of do things and worry about consequences later. That's how I live my life. Read about it. There we go. It's a perfect spot for that gun. <clears throat> oh, Pac-Man got through. Like, I don't know. Am I supposed to care? I guess I am. I'll just put more of these guns around. Whatever. They'll do something, right? Should I upgrade these? Oh, they're only $5 to upgrade. Definitely should be upgrading these things. <coughs> Okay, so tower defense games, they're not necessarily bad. Don't don't get that impression from me. Um, and uh, what's interesting about my audience is like, I'd say most of the people who watch my channel are like along for the journey. So they're not watching. They didn't find me by looking for this game. They found me because they've been watching the 1001 stuff. And probably a game like this, I'd say most of my audience has never heard of or played. So they're gonna, So you guys are probably watching it right now with me. Like, yeah, man, like what a weird choice. Like, is this supposed to be like some impressive game? Like, I don't know. But then there's there's going to be people who look for this game, find my video, they go to watch it, and they're extremely offended and or disappointed by my reaction to it because I don't have reverence for it because they look for it because they, they like the game. They want to remember it and stuff. So... Out of respect for them, I will say that uh, I don't think tower defense games are like inherently defective or boring. Oh, I should be spending my money. Here, I'm just blathering on to you guys about all sorts of nonsense that nobody cares about. All right, let's effing laser this place to the ground, man. Let's upgrade these mama jamas. You guys can't even see what's happening. Isn't this fun? This is why you don't normally see Let's Plays of uh, mobile games, because it's not interesting. Um, no, so tower defense games, I know there are ones like Pixel Junk Monsters. Is that a tower defense game? Um, there's a couple of other ones. Um, and you know what? I think everyone also has their own favorite tower defense game. So when I was growing up, and near the end of high school, I played a lot of StarCraft. And one of the things I always admired about StarCraft is the game was so moddable. It had, uh, you know, you could make custom triggers and custom maps. And you could create whole different game modes. And people made all sorts of cool, funky game modes, including um, tower defense games and all sorts of stuff like that. And I guess I should be putting more rockets in. I'm going to lose here. Yeah, I was too busy talking. Um, in StarCraft, there are all sorts of tower defense games, and I loved tower defense in StarCraft. Um, and then years later, there was a Flash game where it was a tower defense game just on Evom's World or something, but they had stolen all the sprites from StarCraft. Um, and it, was, it wasn't it was a StarCraft tower defense game, but it was a tower defense game with all the StarCraft stuff in it. Um, and that I really liked for a little while. So it's like, I do have tower defense games... Um, that I have enjoyed. Um, let's be a little more strategic about all this. See what we can actually get to, to happen here. All right. I'm going to try and pass this level, and then I make no promises. 
Um, but yeah, what was your what what you know like? I think we can all agree. Even people who like this game, they probably don't like every tower defense game. So it's like everyone has their own favorite tower defense game. What was your favorite tower defense game? And props if it's any tower defense game that was made in StarCraft because uh, that was mine. So naturally, I'm going to respect you more. Um, no, the. StarCraft custom games were literally insane. You could make RPGs in them. You could make... There was, like, Zone Control was a big one. There were, like, Zombie Horde modes. There's Capture the Flag, Soccer. It was truly remarkable how much you could do with those StarCraft triggers. Um, and, uh... Oh God, I sound so narcissistic continually bringing out my own stuff. But uh, on my side, my side hobby gig is I made that Battletech game and I'm still working on it and stuff. And if, it, if you have played it or even gone and looked at it, you know that it has a very sophisticated trigger engine to the point where much of the game is written in game triggers. And that specifically... I should be placing these stupid thingies. That specifically is a design choice that I basically stole right from StarCraft because even to this day, I remember how cool it was to have the power... To, to take StarCraft, a real-time strategy game, turn it into an RPG, turn it into a chess game, turn it into zone control, turn it into um, a tower defense game, you know? Like, I love modding games and modable games, and StarCraft might be the game that I played that had been modded the most. Like, I know Doom and stuff also had a lot of mods, but I don't remember ever playing downloading too many of them and like playing like whole different game modes but starcraft there was literally like a chess version you know there was all there's all sorts of like really cool stuff and i got into like making my own mods and uh i always remember how good their system was and how i was like man more games should be like this more games should have all these triggers and allow you to just mod stuff and you know i mean we've talked about it before on the channel but like some developers are really like down to have you mod their stuff and others are like encrypting their files locking shit off like you know don't even touch it newbie you know you just screw it up um i don't know if i should be upgrading or building more but this time i just built a lot more because i noticed i had a bunch of money so let's continue i'm just gonna start upgrading stuff because i guess i'm running out of space but uh <laughs> yeah, I've never understood developers who want to close off their game. Because I always feel like, no matter how good your game is, you're going to run out of steam and money for making more content. If you literally just let people mod it, it would have such a bigger life and it would go... on. Like, the Doom engine, and especially even, like, the Quake engine. Like, Doom has been modded to the ends of the earth. There's, like, a Ghostbusters mod, I think, in Doom. Or is that Duke Nukem 3D? Uh, but anyway, the guys at id Software, it's like all of their games are heavily moddable. They're, so it's like StarCraft and the the guys at id, you know, in the early days of Quake and Quake 2 and stuff. Um, you know, like they were really in favor of modding because they were hackers. You know, the, the id Software guys, they were literally hackers. They were just sort of, you know, got into making games. And I feel like you can just tell by playing their games that they were passionate about, like, the game code and the engine and, uh, you know, they just wanted they just wanted to produce something that other nerds could tinker with. And there's a lot of respect in that, I believe, personally. So that's my philosophy with games. People should be able to mod them into whatever stupid tower defense mod they want. Because <laughs> to hell with it. We, it's, a, it's, a guilty, it's a guilty genre. You know, like a guilty pleasure genre. We all like a tower defense game. Don't pretend you're better than the rest of us. You're playing tower defense right now as you watch my video. You're on your phones playing tower defense. Jay sees everything, you know. I see it all. Okay, I'm just lining this up a little more. Let's do one more level, I guess. And then this game is done. Double tap on a laser tower to lock its orientation. Oh... Oh, interesting. So you can, like, lock them in. Well, that's a bit of a game changer. How do we... Okay, as soon as he, like, shoots upward... Now he's locked into place, baby. And we'll, uh... Throw this guy here to mop up. <laughs> Just that one little shot. Pew! 
blows them up. I mean, there are co little cool tactics like that, being able to lock your tower and stuff. Um, you know, I think I started too negatively with this game. I don't hate tower defense games. Don't get me wrong. And they are, they do have their own like sick little pleasure to them. Um, but, uh, you know, the farther we get in the book, the less time is left for the book to surprise me. You know, like when we were in the really early days of, uh, of playing this thousand and one book, it's like, if we played a game that we were like, eh, I don't know about this one. It's like, yeah, but kind of who cares because we got like 800 more games to get through we're at the stage where we're now like we're down to like about a little over 200 left and that may sound like a lot but i guarantee I, I i've looked ahead i mean i know it's in the book i don't know everything you know i haven't like memorized it um i don't like go to bed reading the book and like you know fall asleep clutching it in my pearls uh as i, I pass out in the evening but um where was i going with this um, I know broadly what's in the book, and it's like there's not as many huge games left as one might imagine there should be, given that there's 200 games left, and given what we've seen yet. So it, it is an interesting beast in that it's sort of like it did some things right. It definitely did some things right. There's some major oversights, too. Big things that they forgot about. Like big, important big games now look we're dying oh well whatever we'll probably die soon then that'll be that we can all be out of our misery you don't have to watch me play this game and i don't have to play it i don't know if locking my lasers in place has really helped me all that much i thought they would do way more damage but they seem to suck can i place i can't even place missile launchers this is just like if you suck, you lose this mission kind of mission. Yeah, I don't know. We lost. Geoswarm defense. You know what? One more with feeling. I'm going to pass on that offer. I want to look up the history of this game. Geoswarm defense mega contract killer. By American Studio Critical Thought Games, available for the iOS. Oh, and Windows Phone. I, what, I, do Windows Phones even exist anymore? It's one of those things of like, I, I didn't, don't think I ever knew anyone who had, just like a Zune. Did you guys ever know anyone who had a Zune? You got your first iPod, you go to school, somebody has a Zune. They're like, it's the future, man. And then like, all you get is a little cameo in a Guardians of the Galaxy movie, like, 30 years later and that's that's the legacy of zune right there anyway um gameplay over seven seven tower defense types can be purchased dropping them onto the maps new levels include vortex towers stage has three difficulties downloadable content was released um it's literally it there's nothing about it being super important so this was literally just the guy who wrote the book is like you know what i like to play when i'm i'm riding the bus into the book writing facilities tower defense swarm geo position we should put that in the book i don't know why he talks like this but he does that's what they did one of the games in the book a thousand one video games was played before you die you don't need to do I, i'm calling this one you don't you don't need to play this one before you die uh nothing against you if you like this one uh as i say you know, I'm all I'm all for everyone liking their own tower defense games. But in terms of a book of a thousand one video games that historians will look at. Uh, look, look, you can like see more light if I hold the camera in a weird way. Anyway, um, in turn, you know, a thousand years from now, when anthropologists look back on humanity and they find this ledger of a thousand and one games that we as a society decided were important enough to put in a book. For all time. They're going to wonder why we put this book game in. Because even they will know it's not a must play. It doesn't seem to be particularly important to the iPhone. It was just one that some random guy liked. And he was in the right place at the right time. He wrote the page that had this. Guys, what do you think? How wrong am I? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, thank you for taking everything I say with a grain of salt. I hope that if I deeply offended you... Part of you was slightly amused at my ramblings, and uh, you'll nonetheless smash the like button. And uh, if you did like the video, I hope that you will conversely 
smash the dislike button so we can get a little, little anti-voting going on in this video and really confuse the algorithm. And other than that, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Until next time, my friends, you take care of yourselves. We'll see you soon. Oh, and don't forget to comment down below. What is your tower defense game? Because again, guilty pleasure. I'm sure we all have them. Until next time, folks, you take care of yourselves. Peace. Oh, and I'll wave at you this time. Bye-bye. See ya.